on the reel. The reel's getting wild. Animals, that is. With a leopard, a fox, and a binturong. What's that? We'll find out. Plus the sexy Ryan Guzman. And makeup that will make you step up your game. I'm plumb out of bean bags. So we'll pass my break on the reel. So Girl. Tamar, Hi. <laughs> I heard you got something in the mail recently and you wanted to share it with us. So I'm really excited about this. What is it? I did. Really? Okay, have y'all <laughs> ever watched, we all have watched award shows before, right? Right. Yes. And so like, have you ever wondered what happens to the people who lose the category? Do they just oh, go yeah, home? Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Like, yeah. Like, okay, so I just thought it was interesting because I thought to myself, I was like, self, <laughs> if I didn't know, I would want to know. Yeah. You know, if you do you get anything? And guess what? what? You, you get something. What do you, you do? do? Yeah, okay, so, okay. I got nominated for my fourth Grammy nomination. Just like, <laughs> yeah. and, and so I got something special in the mail. Now, this is what happens, you know, <laughs> when you don't get the Grammy that comes to your house. Okay. okay. So. So you get a nice little cute oh, Tiffany, Tiffany. Bond. That's fancy. Ain't God good, he's yes. still favoring, okay? Yes. And you, so I'm gonna open it up for everybody yes. so I want you guys to see what oh you get. Oh my goodness, that's I wanna really see. So, mm -hmm. get your little dust bag. And so what happens, that, and then you Whoa. get a beautiful, beautiful, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, like, it is well with my soul. It is well, that's I'm beautiful. okay with it. Isn't that beautiful? Wait, it's a medallion. Yeah, so it's just a reminder that, you know, you're still a winner, boo. Yeah. <laughs> Try and when you really work you hard, show up. Let them yeah. touch it, are you? you oh, you want to touch it here? So That's be. like, I feel we like the Olympics. Down? Oh wow, that's it's heavy awesome. too. And what's you, that? Um, so you get a you get a, a letter. It says, "Dear Grammy nominee, it's my personal pleasure to congratulate you on your nomination for the 58th Grammy Awards. The recognition of your peers within the music industry is a significant Ooh. and meaningful honor that entitles you to proudly wear the title of Grammy nominee oh. as you join us." Yeah. Who shared that achievement? And it's signed by Neil Port Portnow, who is the president and CEO. Wow. This is heavy. Oh. That is awesome. This and thing so is heavy. It's heavy and it's beautiful, so it's going to go with the other three. Yes. But next year, I'm taking home the real Grammy. Yes. 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 Reminder, For because sure. you know, when you do an album, it's a journey. So yeah. Yeah. that's my journey that's for us. Oh, wow. Yes. Well, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, no, you're always a winner in our hearts. Yeah, that's okay. right. And I feel like a winner. Mm -hmm. Speaking of someone who knows the Grammys very well, Beyonce dropped her highly anticipated sixth album, Lemonade, this weekend. And she instantly broke the internet, okay? On the album's fourth track, Sorry, Queen Bee calls out an unfaithful partner and ends the song by saying, he better call Becky with the good hair. You Come guys on, heard that, somebody. right? Well, many people are speculating that Becky's actually fashion designer, Rachel Roy, and that she was the cause of the infamous elevator fight between Jay, Beyonce, Jay and Beyonce's sister Solange back in 2014. Mm -hmm. So, Lonnie, is the beehive reading into this way too much? Let me tell you. <laughs> This was drama, okay? Social media. Yeah, because I was coming back from um, Oakland mm -hmm. at 4.30. I was catching the 4.30 flight, West Coast. I looked on the Instagram, right? Yeah. The Instagram, the chick, Rachel Roy, put up... She tried it. Yeah, she put up uh, a picture, and she said, Good, good hair, hair, don't, don't care. care. Sit down somewhere. But we will take good lighting for selfies or self-truths always living the light, hashtag no drama queens. So when she put that up, people it assumed that, that she, she was Becky. That she's outing herself as Becky. Why would you do that? Now, let me tell you, you that beehive got so mad, anybody named 
Rachel, they was getting on. They, Rachel yeah. Roy, Rachel Ray, Rachel, Ray, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Friends, Rachel Jackson, you guys Rachel are kidding Edwards, me. everybody. They were going after the other Rachels? <laughs> it, was, it, was, I, it was so, I mean, it was like, I, I, was, I was watching it on Real Instagram because it was coming up like, she and she was trying to delete. Whoever was running her account yeah. was trying to delete the comments. The comments just kept going. She had like 4,000 comments, so she took the post <gasps> down, and then they started going on to her other, you know, post. Yeah. And so she had to make it private. And yeah. then she finally released a tweet. She said, I respect love, marriage, family, and strength. What shouldn't be tolerated by anyone, no matter what, is bullying of any kind. But that beehive ain't playing. Yeah, so I, 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 whoo, them some fans. Hey, I, <laughs> listen, I, look. I, Thank you, that's Snoop Love yeah. right there. Just... <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to dig too much in their business like right. that, because yeah. they ain't got nothing to do with me. I like Rachel Roy clothes. Mm -hmm. Everybody know how we feel about Beyonce. She's our sister, right. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But why would you put out a tweet that says, Good hair, don't care what you trying to say. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, even if even if that's how you feel, you don't put that on social media. Call one of your friends up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. I just feel like that. Like, I I want to say, you know, maybe she didn't watch the lemonade thing. Everybody she watched, watched it. the lemonade yeah. thing, and and that like. Maybe it was bad timing. No, no. I just she tried. Maybe she tried. Maybe she tried, right tried to think of. A, she tried. Do you think, to think maybe? Reason? Do you think maybe? I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm trying. To, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Me too, girl. I was okay. trying. Do you think maybe she didn't think a lot of people would look at her Instagram? Come on. <laughs> I'm trying. Well, I, I don't well, know. This isn't the first we've heard of it. I've heard about the Rachel Roy allegation Everybody heard about a the long Rachel. time ago. So I think in that situation, remove yourself Absolutely. from a topic that shouldn't concern yeah, you. Yeah, if it doesn't have and anything to do with you. when it comes to people's Come marriages. Come on, friend. At all. And if it has nothing to do with you, your Instagram should have been like, yes, Beyonce, yes. lemonade. Yes. Or say nothing. If it had nothing to do with you. Because initially, when I think of Becky with good hair, I think of, you know, Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. It right. is so big. You know, right, so right. I think like a white girl yeah. right. with, you know, right. one nice hair. And that's what everybody else was thinking. Okay. And then here she come, you know, would not hurt oh Instagram. And we like, oh, that was girl, unnecessary. Don't do that. that was yeah, just totally unnecessary. unnecessary. Guys, they even went as far as to change her Wikipedia page. Did yeah. you guys see this? No. <laughs> no. Now, granted, it is terrible, but I will say the beehive is very. <laughs> it, it is. They are very, uh, I guess, funny Protective. or yeah. they, they went and they changed. They said she, this is very sad. She oh died God. April 23rd under a lemonade stand. <laughs> that's bad, no, that's bad. <laughs> that's so bad. Tamara, would you agree that no one knows what goes on yeah. in a relationship? You truly don't. No one knows. It is between those two people. Only yeah. they know what they share. Only they know if their lemons were worth saving and making lemonade yeah. or not. Yeah. Like so, that, it's between the two of them. So just let it go. Yeah, so don't. Yeah. That's don't why I like cranberry juice. <laughs> All right. I, I, okay. From cranberry juice, from <laughs> lemonade to lying, the Windsor Star is reporting that a Canadian high school basketball star from South Sudan may actually be 29 years wow. old. <laughs> Jonathan Nicola, who is six foot nine, <laughs> he's a tall dude, was living with his coach allegedly pretending to be 17 years old. He is currently in custody. However, school officials insist that Jonathan was never a threat to any other student. He just wanted to play basketball. Oh. So, Jeannie. Yes. Have you ever felt the need to lie about your age before? You guys, I feel very strongly about this. Absolutely not. I do not lie about age. Mm -hmm. Here's why. I really embrace age. I think the sexiest thing about a person, I don't care what you look like in your 20s or in your 30s, but wisdom makes people look sexier. Yeah. And okay, I'm not gonna ignore though that I am a part of a culture. I always say Asian no raisin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we look like this for a long time and then all of a sudden overnight you like wake up in your shriveled cute little raisin that does like <laughs> Tai Chi in the park and, and double parks in parking lots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Still, though, age is such a beautiful thing. I feel bad for people who cringe at their birthdays because yeah. that's a gift of life, people. Yeah. Don't be afraid of age. Yeah, there are so many people that are like, oh, my birthday's coming I around. Hate that. I'm it's turning sad. 30. A lot of my friends were like devastated that they yeah. were turning 30. I was so excited to turn 30 because 
for a lot of my life, I looked younger than I really was. Like, uh -huh. I, in the Cheetah Girls, I actually was playing a 15-year-old when I was 19. Mm -hmm. So when I ended Cheetah Girls, I was 25 years old, still playing 16. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to be like, I'm a grown-up. Yes. I swear I'm grown. I'm going yeah. to look grown. And in Cheetah Girls, they never let us wear makeup. It was like, pinch your cheeks and put yep. some chapstick on. Mm -hmm. And then I found contour. Praise Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I think now I look. You always make fun of me. You say that with no makeup on, I still look like the cheetah girl. Exactly, to you guys. To the Whereas, team. thank God for that's contour. That's a good problem to have, eh? I mean, but I want to be young. grown and sexy. I want to be, I want no, to be it. like an adult. Are you adult. grown and sexy I now? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, some weight. What I'm saying is, is you can look young yeah. and then you can look like you do now. That's, you know that's this because you awesome. look like a baby face. Yeah, True. Come on, Lonnie, you with me. I'm sorry to cut you off, friend. But uh, it's all cute and fine and dandy, you know, when you younger to lie about your age. <laughs> okay. Because I, right? Was you on that train? No. no. You wasn't on that train. No. Was you on that train? <laughs> younger to lie about, like you want to lie about it. You, you wanted to be older. Be, no, oh. you want to be older. Like yeah. when I was 15, I was lying and I was 18. Right. Me too. <laughs> Especially with the boys. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. I do remember that. Mm -hmm. Especially in high school, it seems like such a big deal to be a freshman compared to being a senior. You guys want to know what I want to know? What, what do you want to know? About this guy, did he go to the classes? I mean, he's 29, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. He looks older, yeah. guys. Well, what did about, he do? But you know what? I have to say, when I was in college, you know, we in marching band, we had people that was 30, 35 in the marching band. Why? We don't yeah. have enough people in the marching band. So, you know, no it, it, it happens. Yeah, because we needed, we was going to be marching 100. So we needed 100 people, uh, and we needed somebody to play the clarinet. Had the and church that, band and, with Yeah, okay. and we didn't, so we had old people marching in our band. Oh, but you gosh. knew that they were That's old. That's so funny, yeah. No, I didn't know. I didn't realize it. I was like, dang, you taking a long time to get your degree. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Some people do that as long as he wasn't hurting anybody, but yeah. it's still an unfair advantage yeah. with that's him being yes. that. Oh, that's Agreed. the problem with yeah. this. So, grown man. You yeah, you got to check IDs now if you're going to be yes. on the college basketball exactly. team. All right, yes. you know. Yeah. And I think everybody should remember, as the great Aaliyah said, age ain't nothing but, but a number. number. Remember that. Mm -hmm. All right. It's how you feel. Yeah. Yes. Like, my mom is older and she's still like, I feel young. Like, I don't feel older. My mom and my as mom well. embraces her age. Yeah. My mom as well. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes, like today, I feel 25. <laughs> and you look it. He won't tell me I ain't 25. You look 16 with that with that ponytail. Oh my God, friend! <laughs> you too can have you a young ponytail. Go to your house. It's been five days since the passing of music icon oh. Prince, and since his death, it's come to light that Prince <clears throat> gave the world a lot more than just his incredible music. In a recent CNN interview with Don Lemon, political contributor and Prince's friend Van Jones revealed that Prince had been secretly donating to numerous charities throughout the years. Now, Jones even said that Prince would sometimes perform concerts simply as a cover to help out a struggling community or city. He's a wow. great guy. Man, he's Great guy. As a matter of fact, you guys, um, there was $34 million donated to the city of Oakland under yes. an anonymous donor, and they believe that it, it's coming to light that it was probably Prince. Wow. That money went to so many different things to help the city, such as solar, solar. panels and, and coal writing for the children. Yeah. Wow. And also, if y'all remember, in 2011, um, he did 21 nights in L.A. He took an L.A. Yeah. residency. He helped out the forum, and he gave, like, he gave about 12 or 16 shows to help keep the forum open wow. in Inglewood, California. Wow. And they show, um, they pay tribute to him by having purple lights. That's a picture of it. Beautiful. So, you know, Tamar, what do you remember most about Prince's impact on music Ugh. and the culture over the years? Well, number one, he changed the game. Yeah. I mean, in so many different ways. Like, he, he was like, like the godfather to us younger um, artists, even, he was a really good friend of my sister's. Mm -hmm. And when my sister went through her bankruptcy and, and she didn't want to sing anymore and she didn't, wasn't feeling it, he was like, you're crazy. You have a gift. Mm -hmm. You need to continue. I'm going to get to the bottom. I'm going to help get to the bottom of the whole corruption of the music industry because yes. the music industry was in a bad state. Like, mm -hmm. he really helped, you know, to change laws about masters and, you know, samples and artists wasn't getting paid. Like, he was just a really amazing, special guy. And I I hate telling stories about, you know, people who have passed on because you can't check your facts. Mm -hmm. But um, something I never told anybody 
openly before uh, was he had this artist named Tamar. I don't know if y'all remember this a long time ago. Yes, and I was going to sue Prince. He tried it. And so... No way. <laughs> Yeah, no I mean, no shame, no shame. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, he called me, he was like, Tamar, Tamar Braxton, <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna use your name, but I want you to use your name, and I want you to put it to good use. And oh, for me, wow. you know, I mean, and I've seen him so many times after that, and he would always talk about, you know, how great my music is, and always talk about being a musician while singing, because that's very important. That was something that was important to him. And he was just an all-around great guy, and a funny guy. Like, I had this Chanel purse, y'all. <laughs> and my sister was making fun of me because I put chitlins in my new Chanel purse. <laughs> I did, because I didn't want to check my chitlins, because what, what, what would happen if I checked my chitlins? Yes. And so he was like, I understand that. <laughs> so he was really cool, and then he could play basketball in heels. Did y'all know that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No way! So yeah. cute. Awesome. That is so true what you said. He started the uh, Artist Empowerment Coalition, Absolutely. which is why he changed his name to a symbol because he didn't want anyone to own him or his music. And right. I think that for the younger people coming up, I joined the Artist Empowerment Coalition when I was 14 or 15. Wow. And, and just to be a part of that and knowing what Prince had done to pave the way so that younger artists wouldn't be robbed of their money, their music, their talent. And I think that's huge. And just to see everything else he did. Um, I only have met Prince once. Mm -hmm. And it was not as lovely as your story, oh, Tamar. No. <laughs> Girl, somebody told me that Prince was having a private uh, performance in his home. He does that. Uh, he did that. Okay, he did a private performance in his home, and he was inviting like some exclusive radio people. So I knew somebody that was going to the party, and I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna hang out at this restaurant in here, and you can find a way to get me in. Yeah. Then just let me know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll I'll roll right up, and you just get me right through that door. You know what I'm saying? And it was at his house, and so me and my best friend Julissa. We were like, okay, we might get into Prince tonight. So we went, got all dressed up and just sat at like a corner restaurant, just chilling at the bar. We got the phone call that two people, I'm so sorry, Clear Channel radio station, yes. uh -huh. that two people were not coming under the names of Jan and Lisa. You got, yo, we, done. we, done. we Hi, snuck Jan. into Lisa. Prince's house. Uh, I know this uh, is so uh, wrong. Uh, Under the names of Jan and Lisa. You can tell. We was like, Hi, we're from Clear Channel Water, somebody. <laughs> and my Clear Jan. And this is, this is Lisa. That's us right there. They said, Oh, they said you weren't going to make it. We made it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. Cool. Prince was a good yeah, for yeah. Prince. You know what? The nice thing is that we have a lot of music. He has a lot of music in the vault that he says. Yes. That, um, you know, hopefully it's going to be turned over into new music so he will live on. And I just want to thank Chris because I wouldn't have known what controversy meant if it hadn't been for your controversy album. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Prince. All right? Here at The Real, things can get pretty wild in these streets. Mm -hmm. Well, get ready because we're about to reach peak wild. Our next guest is the wildlife expert. I've been watching him since I was a kid. And if there's one thing that he knows, most party people, it's animals. I'm super duper over excited. Lies, I'm nervous. <laughs> Please welcome the director emeritus of the world famous Columbus Zoo in Ohio, Jack Hanna. What I'll do here, these are, are clouded leopards. Okay. Yeah. Just lay them on your lap. Okay. You can have them to, climb to you, you want to, just don't let them jump off the couch. Okay, okay. <gasps> these are clouded leopards, everyone, and they're one of the rarest cats in the world. Yeah. They're from Southeast oh. Asia, and these oh. cats spend about 90% of their lives in trees. The only cat in the world that does that. Really? <gasps> no way. How big think is I'm a couch well, right they'll now. Get to be about, they'll get to be about like this big, maybe, maybe like... Uh, 60, 50 to 75 pounds. That's How big. old are these? These are baby ones, yeah, right? Yeah, these, these here are about uh, eight, almost two months old. Oh, no. they they walk that one's making noise. Wait, you Do they have teeth, though? <laughs> they have what? Do they have teeth right now? Teeth? Yeah. When they're full grown, they call the cat that hunts in silence. When you'll hear it, it's when you're in the cat's stomach. What? Oh it's a joke. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> Stop it. We're like, wait, I'm what? Scared. No, no. They, oh, they wow. do call it the cat that hunts in silence, so okay. you would never okay. hear okay. one Okay, it's going to get stuck in my hair. It's oh, going to get oh, stuck in my hair. Not the hair, not the hair. No, not the hair. No, 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 no,
Well, this is all very exciting. So uh, let's see what else you've got right. for us. We brought some neat little creatures here. We really have. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh. Me. This one. Okay. Yeah, put it on my shoulder. Oh. Just, oh. Oh, she loves animals. I love animals. I'm gonna smell like butter popcorn. See, I, can't, I can't believe she did that. How do you know that? You, you, you tell them that. It's true. No, it smells it? like butter popcorn. It's exactly what it's noted for. Wait, really? what? It smells just like butter oh, popcorn. Geez. Why? It's just the way nature made it. Because I love him traveling Jeannie. with him because I get so he hungry when eat popcorn. Now remember something. This, this animal here, one, is called a bear caterbenterong from Malaysia. Okay. The animal's in the mongoose family, which means it'll eat, eat anything. Oh, yeah, very really? They're friends, right? They're not. They no, friends. Yeah, they're raised together. They're, yes. they're raised yeah. together? No, you, can okay. you, you can sit down. You can sit down. Oh, my God. Just go. <gasps> but it's going places. He loves yeah, you. Look at this. He, oh. <laughs> he, he really likes you. Oh, my Both gosh. Hands. Both hands. Now, the tail here, everybody, is one of the strongest prehensile tails. Everybody love the love, See this tail? <laughs> you see this tail here? Yeah. This tail is the strongest prehensile tail of any animal in the world. Is that, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Can you hold the pad? Perfect both hands. Perfectly, <laughs> perfectly fine here, Jack. Keep talking. No, she's a, you are, I don't think I've ever met anybody this brave. I'm not brave. I'm, I'm ready to be brave. the projects, Jack, okay? <laughs> so, I, I can handle this. I'm all right with this. Okay, Jack, Sorry. what kind of noises okay. does the bear cat make? They, they kind of laugh a little bit, but remember... Oh, the, is remember that, the, was that three? They, they love this Which one here. Which one is making a noise? Making both noise. of them. No, all of them, no. No, they're fine. You're so cute. Yeah. You're adorable. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. Here, Susie will take the cat. This, everybody, the bear cat or binturong, everyone, is in the mongoose family, which means they eat anything. I mean, yes. I'm talking about reptiles, cobras, anything oh, wow. it is. There's no what size. Tiny no, thing. oh no, this thing gets to be about 75 to pounds to 100 no, pounds. Really? This How tail right here could literally go around your neck and <gasps> strangle you in 30 seconds. See, but that's, that's, why but that's not what they do. They hang upside down. You didn't mention that, Jack, before. Oh, no, Jack. I, no, I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> No, I meant, I meant the big ones. I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh, no, okay. No. She was like, you had that thing in my head? No, no, it kind of no. looks like a sloth in a way. Well, kind of, but it's a bear cat. Here, we'll teach this little cat here. Let me have him. Okay. This little, here, we'll have Susie take the cat. Oh, you're you going to give it to me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let, let me walk around the couch. He's good. Okay. Oh. They're a beautiful animal, but you're very hard to find in the, in the Malaysia the forest there. Okay, thanks. Oh. That guy looks like he can he's hear really well. Yes. Oh. Yeah. oh, my God, that is so that, cute. Yeah. Now, what is this? this yeah, this is a Fennec fox. This is a homo sapien. He's a boy. He's about six foot tall, not married. Oh, the fur is so anyway, soft. Anyway, this is a Fennec fox, everyone, the smallest fox in the world. In Northern Africa, the, the Sahara Desert, uh -huh. they live in the desert. These animals can go their entire life with no water. Really? Because, what? You know, wow. Yeah, they can eat little, uh, little insects, little snakes, all those kind of and things. What are the ears for? All right, the ears of this animal, everyone, it's, you think it's for uh, hearing. It's not necessarily. Elephants have big ears. Why? The blood vessels are in their ears. Okay. They fan their ears so the animal stays cool. Without, it's like a radiator in a car. Same thing here in the desert. Oh, wow. There's hundreds of blood vessels there. Without the big ears, he could not survive. They love wow. these scorpions. You, they love these scorpions. All really? sorts. Yes, these animals are incredible. They're full grown, by the way. It's called the Fennec Fox, the smallest one in the world. Oh. From, so from he Northern is Africa. full grown. Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, wow. But he's still, oh. yeah, just pet him back there. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get your attention. Oh, yeah, oh, they're, they're so beautiful. I should not touch its ears? No, I wouldn't. But Got it. <laughs> good to know. These are yeah. good things to know. They're he very beautiful you. animals. I, he, I, I can't touch he, it yet. He, I, he, I haven't gotten to that point this. yet. But, Jack, thank you so much for stopping by oh, and bringing all your friends. <laughs> this was so much fun. Make sure you check your local listing to find out where you can watch Jack Hannah's Into the Wild Big and break. Jack Hannah I, Wild I, Countdown. <laughs> it is the best time of the year. Summer is coming up and baseball season is in full swing. And what's the great American pastime with Without the great American snack. I'm talking hot dogs, people! Yes, I love those. But not all hot dogs are the same. In fact, many cities have their own special style of dogs and are ferociously proud of their toppings. You guys wanna see? Yeah. You wanna learn? Yes. Let's go hot dogging around the country. Okay, it's time to go hot dogging. Let's see our first stop. Chicago! Woo! Okay, guys, we can't wait to find out about the hot dogs in Chi-Town. So here to help us out, we have Natalie Bumke, co-anchor from Good Day Chicago. Hi, Natalie. How's it going over there in the Windy City? Hey. All we right. are getting ready for the dog days of summer here in Chicago. Yummy. Okay, so what's the number one rule when it comes to Chicago dogs? 
No, no ketchup. ketchup. Oh, <laughs> what? I know really? ketchup. All right, I want to see this. So how do you style a Chicago dog then? Well, I've got Bob here. He's with Vienna Beef, and you can't have a Chicago-style hot dog without a Vienna Beef hot dog. And so yes. walk us through the seven ingredients that make the best hot dog in the country. Okay. We are going to <laughs> drag it through the garden, so to speak. <laughs> okay. And we start with a slather of mustard. Okay. Again, yeah. you mustard. No ketchup. Mustard. <laughs> And then we put that yummy bright green neon relish. green relish. Okay, then yummy. what? Then we're using nice white chopped onions. Okay. So fresh. it's great for a first date. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 the onions. As long as you both have them. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. All right. Then what, Bob? Then we. That, then we put on a slice, a couple slices of tomato. Okay. And again, this is on a poppy seed bun. It has to be poppy right. seed. Okay. Poppy Ooh, seed. I didn't know that. And we use a Vienna natural casing <laughs> hot dog nestled into that bun okay. very nicely. And the other ingredients are the sport peppers, which are little jalapeno peppers. Oh, and nice. Okay. Good. Uh -huh. Also, a pickle Minus wedge. A dash of celery salt. Yes. So it's like and a Bloody Mary on a bun. There you oh, have wow. it. Dragging it through the bun. Yes, I cannot wait to try it next time I come into Chicago. I promise I'm going to stop by. Yes. Me too. That Natalie, awesome. we appreciate you checking in with us all the way from Chicago. Thank yes. you so much. You are always welcome to a Cubs and or Sox game. Yay! Thank you. Come on, Bob. <laughs> I love it. I love that she calls it a Bloody Mary on a hot dog. Yeah. So yeah. That sounds amazing. So now that we've seen the Chicago dog, let's go to my hometown, New York City. from Lisa Evers, anchor from Fox 5 in New York, and see how it's done in the Big Apple. Hey, ladies of the real, what's up? It's your girl Lisa Evers from Fox 5 here in New York. You know we take our hot dogs very seriously. I love this stand, not just because it's owned by a U.S. Army vet, but because they make the best hot dogs. 100% beef, so Brett, my man Damon here is gonna hook me up with a little bit of lunchtime food here. Here you go, Lisa. All right, All right. thank you so much, Damon, awesome. Now, this is the classic. You see how it's placed in the bun, a little bit of the dog at the end, this end, you got the sauerkraut, and then you have the nice steady stream of mustard all the way down so that your entire dog has that tasty flavor of the mustard. This is how we do it in New York. I hope you'll come and visit us. Back to you in California. That sounds amazing. I like the onions off the street on mine too, and some ketchup. Thank you so much, Lisa. You can see her every day on Fox 5 and on her new Saturday night show at 10.30 p.m., Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. Seriously, I grew up eating these, and I'm telling you, these dogs are everything. Are That's really? like the thing to do. You stop in the street in New York, uh -huh. and you get a hot dog. Off yeah. the street. Those the street. look amazing, <laughs> but I think it's time to go to my hometown, D-Town. That's right. Come on. Detroit is in the house, and here's how we eat our hot dogs, a.k.a. the Michigan Coney. We have Root Raj, Fox 2 News morning anchor and reporter in Detroit, to tell us what Detroiters are eating. Hey, good morning, the lovely ladies of The Real. We're coming to you from the heart of the Motor City, and I'm coming to you from the hottest spot in Detroit right now, because this town is known for its hot dogs. Look at this place. It's iconic. Dan Dan, the hot dog man, is here with us. Heist, the man, is going to start making you a Detroit hot dog. And as he does this, I mean, this is literally like muscle memory, second nature for these guys, isn't it? Absolutely. By the way, uh, the hot dog, which is fabulous, which makes it even better, is that our, our famous Detroit chili, and also we use Vidalia onions in season. Right now we're using Oh So Sweet out of Texas. So the whole concept, it's a grilled hot dog, a steamed bun, fresh raw onions, it just the whole, all the flavors melt. That's what makes a Detroit hot dog special. Dan Dan, the hot dog man. Heist, good to see you guys. Say bye to the lovely ladies of The Real. This is the real deal, guys. Yum. We've seen so many amazing hot dogs today, so now let's try them out. Bring out the dogs, Marcel! Oh, I want to take a bite of each. Oh, Thank my you. God. Thank oh, you, my 
my goodness. I love hot What's dogs. What's this one right here? Oh, they smell oh, so good. Oh, that's Detroit. You want to try Detroit? There's Detroit. Wait, there's Chicago. We... Uh, you know, so uh, everybody, uh, let's try them. Get okay. them in. Here you go. Which one We you have USA Fun Hot Dog in around room with us. Our next guest has appeared on hit shows like Pretty Little Liars, Heroes Reborn, and in the Step Up movies. But it was his role as J-Lo's sexy, psychotic neighbor that grabbed our attention. Now this boy next door is starring in the critically acclaimed 80s comedy, Everybody Wants Some. Give it up for Ryan Guzman! excited to be here. All right, now, everybody knows that I'm, like, obsessed with Jennifer Lopez. Oh, yeah. So I have to ask you, what was it like working with her? Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> I, went see, I went to go see the movie. Those, there was some hot scenes in there. There was a couple hot scenes. Oh, you had a picture of her. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, uh, yeah, there was a couple hot scenes, you know. It's, it's really fun working with her. She's a really cool person. Uh, a lot of rumors, you know, going off that. Yes. So it was, yeah. Why does that happen? I think a lot of people see, you know, two co-stars hanging out, and if they get along um, and they're hanging outside of set, people just like to put two and two together and, you know. Makes it more interesting to go watch the movie and think y'all yeah. be together, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, besides acting, you, you also do um, mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. Now, don't that, don't you get beat up and stuff? <laughs> and Not if you're beating up the other guy. <laughs> no? Yeah. Well, no, well, I know when you first start, start out, like, in this whole industry, we ain't got no coins. <laughs> so how that work when, I'm assuming you didn't have health insurance back nah, then. No, I didn't, yeah. So what happened? Wow. Actually, I, I had so many injuries when I didn't have health insurance. Yeah. I, uh, I broke my foot on my last one. What'd um, you do? Well, I had to use another person's cast. So, oh, my goodness. yeah, yeah, I didn't have uh, any health insurance, so I couldn't go anywhere. So I went over to my boy, and he gave me his little uh, cast and put it together, kind of set my foot in the right place, and then use it for the next you time. DIY you your leg. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, <laughs> hey. Smart. Hey, you okay. got to do what you got to do. Yes. Yeah, it healed. I can still use it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. First getting started. Okay, now one of the things that you had to learn for the movie was how to dance like they did in the <laughs> 80s. So I'm dying to know what is the key to 80s dancing? So I've said this before, but it was uh, just told to me uh -huh. uh, a lot of pelvic thrusting. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Pelvic thrusting is a must. Pelvic thrusting it. is a must. Forget. The hands kind of like flail a little bit, like those uh, those auto sail oh, like balloons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The pelvic uh, dudes. Yeah. Thin arms. Exactly. So you understand that we're gonna have to ask you to show yeah. us an eighties movie. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. We live in the future. Okay. We can't. Oh yeah. So touch right here. Here we go. Hey! 